Story Dinawen the Emu, and Goombal Gubbin the Bustard. Dinawen the Emu, being the largest bird, was acknowledged as king by the other birds. The Goombal Gubbins, the Bustards, were jealous of the Dinawens. Particularly was Goombal Gubbin, the mother, jealous of the Diriawen mother. She would watch with envy the high flight of the Dinawens and their swift running. And she always fancied that the Dinawen mother flaunted her superiority in her face, for whenever Dinawen alighted near Goombalgubbin, after a long, high flight, she would flap her big wings and begin booing in her pride, not the loud booing of the male bird, but a little, triumphant, satisfied booing noise of her own, which never failed to irritate Goombalgubbin when she heard it. Goombalgubbin used to wonder how she could put an end to Dinawin's supremacy. She decided that she would only be able to do so by injuring her wings and checking her power of flight. But the question that troubled her was how to effect this end. She knew she would gain nothing by having a quarrel with Dinawin and fighting her, for no Goombalgubbin would stand any chance against a Dinawin. There was evidently nothing to be gained by an open fight. She would have to effect her end by cunning. One day, when Goombalgubbin saw in the distance Dinawin coming towards her, she squatted down and doubled in her wings in such a way as to look as if she had none. After Dinawin had been talking to her for some time, Goombalgubbin said, Why do you not imitate me and do without wings? Every bird flies. The Dinawans, to be the king of birds, should do without wings. When all the birds see that I can do without wings, they will think I am the cleverest bird and they will make a Goombalgubbin king. But you have wings, said Dinawan. No, I have no wings. And indeed she looked as if her words were true, so well were her wings hidden as she squatted in the grass. Dinawin went away after a while, and thought much of what she had heard. She talked it all over with her mate, who was as disturbed as she was. They made up their minds that it would never do to let the Goombalgubbins reign in their stead, even if they had to lose their wings to save their kingship. At length they decided on the sacrifice of their wings. The Dinawin mother showed the example by persuading her mate to cut off hers with a combo or stone tomahawk, and then she did the same to his. As soon as the operations were over, the Dinawin mother lost no time in letting Goombalgubbin know what they had done. She ran swiftly down to the plain on which she had left Goombalgubbin, and, finding her still squatting there, she said, See, I have followed your example. I have now no wings. They are cut off. Ha! 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 laughed Goombalgubbin, jumping up and dancing round with joy at the success of her plot. As she danced round, she spread out her wings, flapped them, and said, I have taken you in, old stumpy wings. I have my wings yet. You are fine birds you Dinawans, to be chosen kings, when you are so easily taken in. Ha! 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 And, laughing derisively, Goombalgubbin flapped her wings right in front of Dinawan, who rushed towards her to chastise her treachery. But Goombalgubbin flew away, and, alas! The now wingless Dinawan could not follow her. Brooding over her wrongs, Dinawin walked away, vowing she would be revenged. But how? That was the question which she and her mate failed to answer for some time. At length the Dinawin mother thought of a plan and prepared at once to execute it. She hid all her young Dinawins but two, under a big salt bush. Then she walked off to Goombalgubbin's plain with the two young ones following her. As she walked off the Marilla Ridge, where her home was, 
onto the plain, she saw Goomblegubbin out feeding with her twelve young ones. After exchanging a few remarks in a friendly manner with Goomblegubbin, she said to her, Why do you not imitate me and only have two children? Twelve are too many to feed. If you keep so many, they will never grow big birds like the Dinawans. The food that would make big birds of two would only starve twelve. Goomblegubbin said nothing, but she thought it might be so. It was impossible to deny that the young Dinawans were much bigger than the young Goomblegubbins, and, discontentedly, Goomblegubbin walked away, wondering whether the smallness of her young ones was owing to the number of them being so much greater than that of the Dinawans. It would be grand, she thought, to grow as big as the Dinawans. But she remembered the trick she had played on Dinawan, and she thought that perhaps she was being fooled in her turn. She looked back to where the Dinawans fed, and as she saw how much bigger the two young ones were than any of hers, once more mad envy of Dinawan possessed her. She determined she would not be outdone. Rather would she kill all her young ones but two. She said, The Dinawans shall not be the king birds of the plains. The Goomblegubbins shall replace them. They shall grow as big as the Dinawans, and shall keep their wings and fly, which now the Dinawans cannot do. And straightway Goomblegubbin killed all her young ones but two. Then back she came to where the Dinawans were still feeding. When Dinawan saw her coming and noticed she had only two young ones with her, she called out, Where are all your young ones? Goomblegubbin answered, I have killed them, and have only two left. Those will have plenty to eat now, and will soon grow as big as your young ones. You cruel mother to kill your children. You greedy mother. Why, I have twelve children and I find food for them all. I would not kill one for anything, not even if by so doing I could get back my wings. There is plenty for all. Look at the emu bush how it covers itself with berries to feed my big family. See how the grasshoppers come hopping round, so that we can catch them and fatten on them. But you have only two children. I have twelve. I will go and bring them to show you. Dinawen ran off to her salt bush where she had hidden her ten young ones. Soon she was to be seen coming back. Running with her neck stretched forward, her head thrown back with pride, and the feathers of her bubutella swinging as she ran, booming out the while her queer throat noise. The Dinawen song of joy. The pretty, soft-looking little ones with their zebra-striped skins, running beside her whistling their baby Dinawin note. When Dinawin reached the place where Goomblegubbin was, she stopped her booing and said in a solemn tone, Now you see my words are true. I have twelve young ones, as I said. You can gaze at my loved ones and think of your poor murdered children. And while you do so, I will tell you the fate of your descendants forever. By trickery and deceit, you lost the Dinawins their wings, and now forevermore, as long as a Dinawin has no wings, so long shall a Goomblegubbin lay only two eggs and have only two young ones. We are quits now. You have your wings and I my children. And ever since that time a Dinawin, or emu, has had no wings, and a Goomblegubbin, or bustard of the plains, has laid only two eggs in a season. Thank you for joining us for today's fairy tale. We hope these stories bring joy and meaning to your day. If you love our channel, please hit the subscribe button so you won't miss any exciting tales. Wishing you a good night and sweet dreams. See you in the next story.